All right, welcome to today's episode of Haskelling the Admin of Code. Uh, today we're going to be doing day 16. We've been at it for quite a while now, right? Let's go, Admin of Code. Uh, where did I put it? What? Let's just open code. Code knows where it is. How's everyone doing today? It's like Wednesday. I love Wednesdays. There was a long running meme. That was like, it is Wednesday, my dude. It's pretty funny. Let's see. Make this bigger so y'all can see. And I made the terminal a bit smaller because I was looking at it yesterday. But let's make it bigger. Let's make it bigger. Here you can see the remains of um, uh, terminal font size. You can see the remains of day 12, which we did yesterday. Um, it was pretty cool. We could use like... We could use like uh, complex numbers. To kind of do all the rotations for us and it just worked see now I can see all right clear it uh, let's see see oh wait oh my god let's just open up a new shell huh there we go we can rock, rock, rock. Ba ba da ba 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 da ba da ba da. All right. Um, is no one on chat today? What's going on? Wait, is my stream even live? Let me see. Twitch dot. Twitch dot TV about. Cause like it's saying that is I've been streaming for zero minutes when I have in fact been streaming. Well, it says live here. All right. If it says live here, then that's what counts, you know. Okay, it's my Facebook um, COVID test tomorrow, but it's good. I already got one negative COVID test. Um. We're gonna get another one tomorrow and we're gonna make sure that I didn't catch it during transport and if I didn't well I'm gonna go hug my grandma I'll be COVID free quite good no let's see uh, here's all my emails good emails now let's see day 16 all right let's see what today has for us uh, let me see. You're still walking to yet another connecting flight. You realize that one of the legs of your routed, rerouted trip coming up is on a high speed train. Let's, I, I kind of want to review the story so far, okay? Let's see. So, day one, we were doing our budget, right? Day two, we went from the coast to the coast by a toboggan, okay? That's nice. In day three, we we yeah we we were like planning our trip after the toboggan login. This was like fixing the passport we, after we arrived at the airport. Then we took a flight and we were we didn't know where to sit. Then there was some issues in luggage. This was this is fun, right? We had a we we fixed the handheld console. It was kind of cool. Uh, right. Oh, then nine. Oh, we 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 helped them with the decoding. What was this? Oh yeah, we we fixed the port, like the little screen in front. That worked out. Now number ten. Uh, okay, we got. Oh shit. So. Okay, yeah. That, then we had to charge our our battery. Okay with a jolts. That was kind of fun. That was, that was hard. 
mean, we did it very fast, but it was it was a bit hard. All right, then we had. Uh, then we went to the ferry, and uh, this was we skipped this originally, but uh, and we did it later. You can see it on the YouTube channel, which I linked in the about page. Okay, then we had a ferry, and then we fixed it. So this is what we did yesterday in a double stream. We kind of figured out where we were going. Then day thirteen, right? Okay, this is like this is on Sunday. I was like, what? What happened? So we made it to by the ferry, and then we had to take a bus to the airport, nearest airport. Okay. And then we were on the ferry and... Okay, yeah, we had to like fix a docking program. Move. Day 15, yesterday. What did we do yesterday? Oh yeah, we... Uh, we helped the owls with their game. That was fun. I like that part. And finally, today is day 16. Let's look at it. Okay, we're... Walking to yet another connecting flight. One of the legs of your... Okay. High-speed train. Cool. Train ticket you were given is in a luggage you don't understand. Language you don't understand, right? You, you should probably figure out what it says before you get to the train station of the next flight. Unfortunately, you can't actually read the words on the ticket. You can't ever read the numbers. And so you figure out the field these tickets must have are the valid ranges. Okay, we figure out... The fields these tickets must have. Okay, and then we figure out the rallied ranges for values. You collect the rules for ticket fields, the numbers on your ticket, and the numbers on other nearby tickets for the same train service. Wow, we're just hacking everything here. Stealing data from left to right? That's... I don't know, is that legal? I don't think that is legal. Let me fix my... Uh, uh, my webcam a bit. Why you uh, focus keeps resetting to auto? Here now you can see the keyboard. Much better, right? All right, let's see. Rules for ticket trades uh, specified a list of values exist somewhere on the ticket. Okay, so we, we look at the ticket, so we don't look at these, we just look at the Vecana values on them. And then... Okay, yeah, cool, 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 cool. Let's see. Uh, start by determining which tickets are completely invalid. These are tickets that contain values which aren't valid for any field. Ignore your ticket for now. Okay, your ticket, nearby tickets. It doesn't matter which position you come upon which field, you can know have a... What is your ticket scanning error rate? Okay. In this example, the value on the first nearby ticket are all valid in at least one field. It is not true of the other nearby three tickets. The values 4, 55, and 12 are not valid for any field. Adding together all of the invalid values reduces your ticket scanning error rate. 4 plus 55 plus 12 plus equals 71. Okay, so we're just going to take these tickets. This is our following notes. I'm going to get the input, as you can see. Okay, so we have a bunch of fields. And then a bunch of tickets. Okay, so we are going to... We're going to have to parse this a bit. What do you had? I don't know. Code open here. Let's see. Let's create it. Let's start. Day 15. Let's go. Whoop whoop. How's everyone doing today? Yeah. I started saying earlier, I love Wednesdays. It was like our long running meme on Reddit. On our dank memes. Which had these, uh, this frog. And it would say. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Okay. 
It is Wednesday, my dudes. Oh my god. It is not any of these. Why isn't it the first? Yeah, this one. This is a good meme. Okay, and it was posted every Wednesday on Reddit R Dank Memes. Let's see. See, I eyebrows are Haskell. That's so Reddit, right? Dank Memes. What do you guys think about the music? It's a bit more intense now. Uh, oh my god. Nobody has posted it? That is not okay. Anyway, they, they, they posted it for years. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Best day of the day, week. Alright. Module... Module main, main where? So, okay, let's look at the input. Close everything else. New input. New file, test input. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna have another file called input. Cause like the input file is quite different from our test input, right? Uh, so it's gonna be parsed as a bunch of things And we're probably gonna have to like, Pick up which ones here This is gonna be a Let's write a parser. We're gonna write a parser. Whoop whoop Always nice to write parsers Let's see I'm gonna change the music. This is too intense. This is not the lo-fi music. I just like I just like this one song. But uh, yeah, let's. Uh, it's not as intense. It's not quite the fixer, but uh, I guess I like it. Let's play this one. Hey, Druid Four. Have you learned any Haskell syntax yet? Uh, Druid4 has been a regular viewer. Uh, and we convinced him, I think. Me and uh, Chrono Kirby, I think. We convinced him to learn Haskell because of security types. And other stuff. Other stuff also. But security types are cool. So let's say... Uh, <coughs> import text.parsec dot byte string now import text dot parsec import text dot parsec dot char yeah I mean it's worth it I think it's definitely worth it now parse range it's gonna be parser for a pair of hints parse Range is gonna be do we're gonna parse a take while one is a digit. Uh, no, so we're gonna say many one digit dig one. So from two many one digit. So then we have so we have a char and we have a like this and then we're gonna say return read from read to um, parse field vals is gonna be a parser uh, so let's see, see range type range equals int comma int and this is going to be a range. Now, this is going to be a pair of ranges. Uh, parse field valves. Where are you at, Druid uh, for? Like, like, where are you in your Haskell education? Uh, we're going to say 
a first uh let me see yeah these all have well only two first a first range and then it's gonna be string or Second, first, second, parse, oh, parse range, return, um, first, comma, second. Okay, now we parse field val, so parse field a key parser it's gonna just return string which is the key parse field key equals do many tail uh, so key return key this is not good because um, it takes in any okay so we say any char and then we say try okay char colon that's the parse of a field key now parse field is going to be a parser so a field type field is going to be it's going to be a string that's a key and it's going to be a pair of ranges Parse for field, that's gonna be parse field. So we're gonna be parsing. So it's gonna be do key parse field key. Then it's gonna be parse field vals. And then it's gonna okay, so here's gonna be spaces. Spaces. Then vowels, and then we're gonna return key comma vowels. Pretty sweet, no? Okay, now we parse one of these fields here. Then we are just gonna be parsing the rest of the input. Okay, so uh, so we're gonna say parse input is gonna be do. So it's gonna be parse. So we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a list of fields. Data input equals input of. So the fields are gonna be a list of fields. Uh, your ticket is going to be a list of ints and other tickets list list of ints now parse input is going to take us from parse to input parse input equal to do first we say um, sep by right Okay, so set by one. Wait, what is it? Google uh, set and by. 
Okay, separate it by sep and by p as part as one or more occurrences of p separated and optionally ended by sep uh, end by one sep parts of zero or more occurrences of p separated and ended by sep so we want to say do so fields is going to be end by one yeah parse field and it's gonna be a so and it's gonna be ended by a hmm so uh this is gonna be sep by one parse input line set by one set by now okay, this is just gonna be okay let's see they're gonna be they're gonna be separated by new lines let's do this first so parse fields parser list of fields parse fields it's gonna be a set by new line set by end set end by one by one I don't want this expansion. It started doing this for some reason. And I don't want it. Uh, end of line. Uh, parse field. Like this. Good match type. Oh, is it like this? Okay, uh, so they're separated by end of lines now. Parse your ticket. That is gonna be a... Do string your ticket. And an end of line and then set by one so we're gonna have a parse int digit gonna be read over a many one digit and it's gonna be separated by char comma um, what's wrong here parse sour ticket oh no parse your ticket okay Now this is gonna be straight do string nearby tickets and end of a line. Let's write this parse ticket parser faint parse ticket.
So this is end of line and then sep by one cars ticket uh end of line. Okay, now pars input. Let's see. Go to the bottom. Mirror ticket fields. Pars input. This is going to be due, so it's going to be. fields and then we're gonna have a end of line Your ticket. Other tickets. Let's say return input. Let's enable rec language record wild cards. Now let's see if this works. string parse from file so let's see parse from file test input uh, we're gonna be parsing input from test input and we're just gonna print trends and what's wrong with this? We have to derive show here. Now let's compile it. See what happens. Compiles. Let's see. Let's see if we actually did. I'm not sure this works. I think the parser is wrong. Let's see, measure command day day sixteen dot xa into out default. We get the parse error. Unexpected end of input. Expecting colon. So parse field, sep by uh, and sep and I parse field. Parse field key. Let's see. Hmm. So many till. Oh, right. Uh... Oh, I didn't paste the input here. The test input wasn't there. Makes sense. Now, let's try it again. Unexpected comma, line six, column two. Expecting digit or dash. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. So it parses all the field keys and then it's like failing on the year ticket. I think it's because we are parsing too many. We're parsing the range and we don't stop the range. Let's see, is this just end of... No. Parse field valves. Um, so parse field is going to be a key in the spaces and then field valves and then end of line. And then this is just going to be... I think this is going to be many one parse fields. So we just build the end of line into the field there. So line six, column two, unexpected comma. Parse your ticket. So it says your ticket, then end of line, then parse ticket. Okay, and parse ticket. Set by this takes a we take a many one digit and then we read that at int let's see parse field valves so we parse a range and then we parse a range and then we return first and second and when we're parsing a range, we say many one digit, many one digit. Oh. It's a tricky, tricky parser. Let's see. Uh, from to read from read to. Let's see here. Um. Trace show id. See what we're parsing. Import debug dot trace. All right. Oh, it's it doesn't finish anything. Hmm. So okay, parse field. Okay, let's just let's just say first. So let's just parse the field in one go. So it's gonna be many tail. So key is gonna be many tail. Any char. Try char. Like this, okay. So then we're there. And then we're gonna be spaces. Then we're gonna parse field valves. So we're going to say here pars. So first is going to be pars range. And then it's going to be a string or. And it's going to be second pars range. So it's going to be, and then it's going to be, oh, is there a space here? No, there's no space, right? And then end of line. It's gonna be first, second. No, still failing. Okay, now we're not using the field key anymore. We're not using field valves anymore. So it's a many one uh, digit. So whatever you say here, many till digit uh, try space. Many till digit try space.
expecting space or digit okay so this is gonna be many tail try choice between space and this is gonna be a choice of try space or try end of line Oh no. Oof. What is going on here? Trace show id. Okay, so it's not... Let's see, so we eat the first spaces and then we say string and say space or space and then we parse the second. This is going to be many one digit and then dash and then another many one digit uh, second parse range so parse fields oh Let's say this is set by one parse field end of line. Okay, uh, so let's see. So we parse fields end of line. here because it's like it's like in this column here six comma two so it's trying to parse a field still for some reason Oof, i'm not so good at writing parsers that's for sure let's see uh how we have some things we can say we can like parse trace Parser trace show key. So class So we parse the key here. This parser succeeds when he returns the parser character. Uh, many till. Let's see, can I do like this? So class colon okay one one three or five okay so let's write here now I've parsed the first one comma three okay and then I show the second Let's see. So we parse the second one. We say class one three five seven. 
Okay, row for skill elements, and then it says four, five, fifty, and then it tries starts saying. Um, So parse fields set by one. Let me see. Many till. So let's have the end of line here. Okay, so expecting new line. Line five, column one. Unexpected Y. Okay, a try. Okay, a uh, left test input. Do Fs. Now then we will parser trace Fs. Turn Fs. I even see, like it did that one finish. see so we parse the fields and the rest of the input is your ticket okay good and then parse so we say parser your ticket okay so I think it's like this we parse the fields, then you parse your ticket. And now parsing your ticket will be your ticket and then end of line, then parse ticket and then end of the line. We parse the fields now. It's good. And it says, okay, yeah, so we're going to return our ticket. Okay, you know, we got that. So we have nearby tickets, colon, end of line, others, and then end of line. No, we don't actually have. Oh. So let's see here, parser trace show ticket. Okay, so we parsed. Alright, and then it says your ticket. So we parse the we parse this right the classes, okay. And then it says your ticket. And then we pass our ticket and it says an RN. Okay, so we have to say uh parse your ticket. Yeah, so that's gonna be three two end of lines, right? No, so for parse ticket it should actually be uh, what is like this? End of line. It's gonna be ticket set by read many digit char end of line. Turn ticket. Is 
This is like an operator for this, right? I can do something like this, I think. type of this FFA yeah no, so it's the other way around exactly okay so now we don't need to show this trace anymore uh, we don't really want to show this trace anymore We need these spaces, okay? We don't need to show this trace anymore. Okay, let's see. All right, let's see what's happening. Okay, we parsed it successfully. Um, let me see. Parser trace. Okay, and then it's doing something here too, right? Parse range. What is it? Why is it still showing us the... These things. Class, row. Um, print res, yeah. Parse field, end of line, read, oh, trace show ID, right. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's happening. Okay, we're gonna actually say here, field is gonna be field. It's gonna be key string. Uh, so then it's gonna be first, which is a range. And then second, also range, and we're going to use the same trick as for input. <laughs> Data field driving show. Bing, bing. Okay, nice. Okay, so now we have all the ranges. Then we have to merge the ranges. That's for the first part. Other tickets. Oh, we only get the first one? Parse by one. Like this. I think. Let's see. No. Oof. Many till. Try end of line. Let's see what happens. Oh my god. So it's, it's not giving us all the other tickets. So parse other tickets. Okay, that's going to be this. Parse, so sep and by one. Oh 
what if I do many many parts ticket because it's like separating and checking and then no it's still failing right ticks parser trace show ticks return ticks we don't want ticks they can be very dangerous so i'm from iceland and we don't really have any forests here so we don't have ticks but uh, in sweden there's a bunch of ticks and uh, apparently and uh, they are nasty like little bugs that eat your face no not your face but they eat you like that's not nice so can we just do this um, okay so let's see what we do when we get parser or other tickets What's the state then? Yeah. Okay, so here. We, okay, so and then we gave. What if we just do. We just, what if we just parse one ticket? So we can't parse tickets. I thought that was what Manny one did. But why doesn't this work then? It fails, unexpected end of input. And by... This is the many till. Parse ticket. Try. End of line. Because it's failing. Line column line A12 column M8. Do I have to like finish the file? And end of line. Unexpected end of input. Expecting try. Oh, okay. Try EOF. Nice. Now it works. Parser trace. And here it's saying. Why not? Yeah, okay. Oh no, this is wrong. I want to make this a little bit more succinct. Succinct. Okay, see? Okay, this works for this one. This is the input. Now, we have to put it in here. I'm just gonna see if it works, or the parser works for the real input. Test input parse 
from file as input input uh, then what do we see let's see a uh, print uh, length other tickets input Okay, it manages to parse the real input too, which is nice. Alright. Now, let's see. Uh, so, the solution takes an input and returns some int, right? It doesn't matter, so, so ticket scanning error rate. Okay, let's just see. Solution. Okay, so. Input. Now let's look at the ranges. Uh, we're gonna map to the fields. like this imp we're going to take in the field and we're going to change it to first second so so far field first second so far on the fields that's in here parse input fields yeah and we're gonna start with the empty list and we're gonna map it oh no it's gonna be starting up with the empty list Bracket. So we're gonna say write input, write test input. We're gonna because we know it's not gonna fail. Print. Uh, let's print it. Wanna become famous? Do I? Solution test input. Let's actually just say here, it's going to leave a list of range. I didn't see the... Okay, so now we have the ranges. Now I want to see, like I want to merge some of these ranges, right? right because like five and seven is uh, it's contained in it right so five and seven uh, so six so this would so these two would merge to five to eleven right Uh, let's uh, sort the ranges. Oops. Sort by uh, compare on first. 
Now we will say import data.list, import data.function. So one, three, five, seven, six, eleven, thirteen, forty, forty, thirty-three, forty-four. Okay, so and then we say um, so then we're just gonna merge the ranges. How do we merge a range? Well two ranges can be merged if the if the start point of the second one is contained in the is is like less than or equal to the end point of the other one plus one. So let's see. Let's let's first write here a uh, contains int int comma int go. I a x comma y s a comma b is this is a less than equal to i and a this contains okay let's see um Uh, let's see here merge ranges i'm going to take a list of ranges we're going to return a list of range now merge ranges of one range so nothing is going to be nothing okay so okay so it's going to be merge range a and b and the rest and now merge range so if we have you know one or nothing uh other that's gonna be other now if we have two ranges we say here ax a no ax a and bx uh a y comma b y a and b equals so okay now these are going to be sorted so we're going to say uh, what's going on okay so merge range okay so this is going to be so if a contains uh, if a contains a y then we can just we can just merge them then merge ranges of uh, ax comma by on the rest So if A does not contain, so uh, let's see here. So this is actually going to be if A contains A Y, or or uh, B X plus one equals A Y, because like they can be like adjacent to each other. Then we can merge them. Else, it's just going to be A merge ranges. A concatenated to merge ranges. B rest. I don't need this. Merge ranges. If A contains AY. Okay, yeah, wait. So this is 
Let's flip these. Now, let's see. Mer merge, merge ranges of the solution. Non exhaustive pattern in function merge ranges. What? Oh. So now we merged all these ranges. Cool. So let's print the ranges again. So now it should be a lot easier to check if they are members of the range, right? So we merged five and seven. So six is contained in this, right? So it's going to be five to eleven, and then. 5 to 11, that's going to be one range, right? And then 13 to 40, so 33 is contained here, so it's going to be like this. And then these are adjacent, so it's going to be fine. I like it. Uh, now, we check um, do -do 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 -do. Now, let's see. Um, okay, so now we have this. We have the ranges. Uh, so, merged ranges is going to be a, this here. Sort by compare on ranges. Uh, and then we're gonna do merge ranges on this Okay, and now we have to look at the nearby tickets So a uh, In any range, it's gonna take an int and it's gonna turn a bool So in any range is equal to so I is equal to uh We're gonna we're gonna flip contains contains an I. We are going to say filter flip contains I merge ranges. A a no. So if a uh, not null. So if if any of, if it is in any of the ranges, this is gonna be null. And what is it complaining about? Why not any flip contains? Okay, yeah, sure. Any not any. And if it's in any range. Uh, what? Yeah, so if this should be in any range, so if it if it's in any of them, um, this should be okay. So let's see. Uh, so adding together all the invalid values produces your ticket scanning error rate. So let's see here. Uh, invalid gonna be a list of ints so invalid it's gonna be filter in any filter in any range of uh, concat uh, we're gonna concatenate the other tickets 
and then we're going to bring this to return to the range of int so this is going to be invalid oops merge ranges okay yeah we can't do this anymore but that's okay let's see if we get the invalid values let's see what happens oh so right so it should be not Four, fifty-five, and twelve. Yeah. So we take the sum of invalid as our solution. Seems good, right? Not too hard. Seventy-one. Let's check. What's the solution for the input? I think the tree key trick here is this merge ranges thing. You know, by sorting them. And then merging them, we make it quite fast. 50 milliseconds. Let's see if this is correct. All right. We did the first one. Woo woo. Took us so long to write the parser though. Better have been worth it. Now it's part two. Now it's for take discard those tickets entirely okay um, so then we cannot uh, so solution to so then we have to discard those tickets entirely so so we want to say uh, has invalid it's gonna take in a list of hints return a bool has invalid and then we say a uh, has invalid equals any not dot in any range of a uh, so has invalid it's going to be a list of ins to bool now we don't need this this is so dumb it wants me to do this like hlint come on flip is totally a valid function why not not all in any range yeah okay that makes sense not uh not dot all in any range now so valid tickets is going to be a filter not uh, dot has invalid other tickets valid tickets filter not has invalid other tickets Let's actually define here type uh, ticket is going to be a list of int. No, present s. You're going to replace all int list of ints with a ticket. Oops. GC. Not this one, but it's a parser for ticket, parse your ticket, parse other tickets. Just so. It looks good okay now we have the valid tickets discard those so many valid tickets to determine which field is which using the valid ranges for each field determine what order the fields appear on the ticket the order is consistent between all tickets if seat is the third field it is the third field on every ticket including your ticket Mm, hey Timmy You did this already I assume We should have a private leaderboard with Timmy <laughs> Just to check if he's done with it or not
Okay, so based on the nearby ticket. Okay, we we found the valid tickets quite fast. Now, so each value in the invalid ticket, we have to go for. Okay, so this is gonna be like a Sudoku, right? Uh, so zero one oh four two nineteen. Second position must be using the valid ranges for each field to determine what order the fields appear on tickets. The order is consistent between all tickets. If C is the third field, it is the third field on every ticket, including your ticket. Can we just uh, get the range of um, so let's uh, let's take a haven't had time to finish part two. Damn, that hard. Okay, so feel to see. T, T fields it's gonna be transpose of valid tickets not transpose just transpose valid tickets uh, okay so T uh, so field range is gonna be ah uh, right there's gaps in the ranges So we have these T fields. Let's return list of list of ints here. A T fields. Now let's see here. Uh, we're gonna run solution two on test input. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Ding, ding, ding. So these are the ranges. Oh yeah, these are the ranges for the valid tickets. Uh, okay, let's see here. Print, let's see. Map dollar take three. We're gonna map take three over these, but on the actual input. I don't see how these things look like. Let's see, a uh, map take three. It's like the first three values for all the fields. This is six eight eight six sixty six six ninety nine. Two hundred two forty two. Okay. Okay. Now I think we want to sort map sort. On the transpose, we can sort the, all the values. And like, this is fast, right? So it's fine. And we're still in the 40 milliseconds. Run time.
And actually, we can uh, Google. Uh, we can nub. Uh, nub removes du duplicates. This is actually faster. I think. Uh, let's see. Import a uh, import data dot set. And we're gonna say because we don't want the n squared here, but we've and uh, we've already sorted it. Uh that's O and log n and then we can do qualify Qualified There is a set as set import did it dot set set This is gonna be From ask list right Set it out to a list. So we're just gonna sort them and then we take put them into the set and then we take them out of the set. And now we no longer have any duplicates. Actually, I think we uh, let's just not sort them. We don't even need to sort them. Just set it out from list. It's actually going to be a list of sets. Damn it! Um, map size. Set dot size. How big are these sets? Pretty big sets. Lots of different values. Three hundred thirty, thirty-three thousand three hundred fifty-five different sets. Okay. Now we want to kind of sp so we want to figure out the ranges of the sets. have these sets of ints and we want to kind of associate each set of ints with a field okay let's just uh, I mean so we're gonna have to check the values because we can't really tell you know if they stop okay so this is always like 
So we have a big range and then we have like an excluded range, right? And these always, they start and they end. Okay. Uh, so let's check. Do exclude. So it's going to pick a field and it's going to turn us a list of ranges. Two ranges. Range, comma, range. Field to excludes. Uh, so it's going to be field. So this is going to be field. And first equals FA, comma, FB. And second equals SA, comma, SB. Equal to. So this is going to be two ranges. Uh, it's gonna be the includes, uh, so it's gonna be FA to SB, and it's gonna be so that's like the entire set, and then it's gonna be uh, the ones that they exclude, which is gonna be FB plus one and uh, SA minus one. Now, uh, let's look here at the uh, map fields to excludes of fields oops list of a uh, pair of ranges let's see uh, let's just see what it says As in that case, for the test input. I wish we had uh, more stuff in um, the test input. So, yeah, so the, for the test input, let's look here back at admin of code. We're doing day 16. Just tuning in, we already done did part one. It was quite fast. And now we're doing part two. We're trying to find like valid tickets. Oh, here we actually have better test input. I think yeah, this is better. Test input two. There's actually a better test input, I think. We're just gonna go ahead and not even check if there's a Zabar zero. We're just gonna say paste two two solution two. It's gonna compile it, run it. Oh shit! And it's going to crash because we didn't do the end of file here. So these are the valid tickets here. So we have one in five and fifteen, one in fourteen. Okay, for the first field. So it can be so zero to nineteen, but not so not between two and three. Second one is zero to nineteen, do not between six and seven, and zero to nineteen and not between fourteen and fifteen. So I basically have to check, uh, so... Now I'm gonna see, uh, say right here. Let's see, could be field. It's gonna take a set of ints and it's gonna take a field. And it's gonna return a bool. Could be field okay so evals and, and then the field and then okay this is gonna be where so 
include exclude equals fields to excludes of f now i'm gonna say the minimum of the set minimum data dot set data dot set data dot set has come minimum look up min right so we're gonna check okay so min max it's gonna be what is min, min find min oh but okay so So this is uh okay. Okay, I'm just gonna say find min and it's gonna be find set dot find min of evals comma set dot set dot find max of vals. Now we're gonna say include is going to be include contains min and so first of all includes have to contain the min contains max Now, I think the range here You see that the uh, the exclusive range is often quite small See here it's like 23 elements, here it's 9 elements, here it's like 13 elements. Let's see here, uh, size range is going to take in a range, I'm going to turn this in an int. It's going to be a range, now size range, size range x comma y is going to be m y minus x right that's the number of numbers a range contains so if it could be that set then um The expression split is a pair set one set two where set one comprises the elements of the set less than x and set two comprises the elements of a set greater than x this is what we want to use we want to split so we want to say minimum and maximum so x glue is going to be going to be a xa comma xb now we're going to say ltxa gtxa um, we're going to say and this is going to be split 
Now this is gonna be a data dot split. No, this is gonna be set dot split vals. So this this is log n. This is log n. And now split is also log n. Now let's split first. Set split vals. X a. Uh, set split vowels. I think it's like set split exa vowels. Now we want to see. So we split it at the edge of the range, right? So we want to see. Okay. So the includes has to contain min. It has to contain max. And. We want a... Um, now, uh, Ma, Exa, and then Me, Kitty. So, so max less than and main GT, that's gonna be set set dot find min find max of the lt exa and it's going to be the set dot find min of gt exa um so and then we have to say not X cool. And okay, now we don't actually have to check that. We just have to check that the the max of the less than is less than is is less than exa. And the minimum of the greater than is less than ex is bigger than exb This is this operation here. So this is this is o log n. This is o log n. And this is o log which is even less than n. So all of these operations here are log n. This is o one. So all of this is o of log n for each of the sets. Now we have the list of sets and the list of fields. Let's check. Uh, let's check. Okay. Map. So for each of the sets of ints, t fields, that's going to be the list of fields is going to be the list of sets of int. And is this song just on repeat? No, it's a different song. So I want to hear a different song. Um, So 
So we're gonna take the kind of so for each field map uh, could be so for each of the fields F uh, we're gonna say filter. Could be field uh, now. So we're gonna say V. So we're gonna say no. We're gonna say F. Ish, no. Okay. So for each field, could be field F, and we're gonna map that over the. Uh, the uh, fields t fields now could be is going to be a list of list of fields and actually we're gonna say here we're gonna say this is gonna be sip with IF and we're gonna say one this is gonna be I comma filter of which This doesn't it doesn't like this because so sip with could match type integer field expected type list of list of field yeah but yeah that's what I want here int it's the fields so let's see here let's return this list of int comma List of int comma. So which field, which set are we talking about? And then this is a field. Let's see. Could be. Now let's see. Empty set has no maximal element. Oosh. I guess that's coming from here, right? Just a MLT. A, it's gonna be MLT less than XA, right? That's what I was replacing. Yeah. Nothing is gonna be true because if there's no minimal element, that's okay. There's no nothing that range. Migged. MGT MGT is less than is bigger than XP.
So first... Oh shit, no, I pasted stuff in. Damn it. Okay, at least it was only the... Okay, let's actually let's actually not do it this way. Let's not do this fields to exclude stuff. That is just confusing. So we're just gonna have F A F B first field, and then this is gonna be S A comma S B. Okay, and then we are going to find the minimum of maximum of vowels this is going to be you know first and second where this here is you know done, done. okay now we just ch check okay min is greater than or equal to fa okay and max is less than or equal to sp and then we split the set and we split it on we split it on fb plus one there's always going to be one number not in the range right so yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And there's always going to be one number not in the range, so we split it uh, on the. Bling. And now this, we just have to check that. So if you split them on the FP plus one, that's gonna take, uh, wait, let's just check split. Split. So, so set comprises the elements of set less than X and set two comprises the elements of set greater than X. What does it mean? Let's see here. I want to see like if it contains the thing it's splitting on. Or to data dot set a from list one, two, three, four, five. No. Split hat three. Oops. Oops. Split three from the list. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, so it splits. Yeah, okay, so that was what is happening. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't include the items, right? It doesn't include the split element. So then we want to split on FB. 
Okay, and then we want to see the lookup max. Okay, so and then so this will not contain FB. So we are gonna say the max of less than max let's call this max LT and min GT. Max LT min GT less than FB and then greater than FB. And now we find the maximum in the less than FB. We find the greater number in greater than FB. This is, this is going to be max LT FB and min GT FB. So if there is any element max LT FB and then we check So this one is always going to be fine. So we don't really have to check this because this is always going to just take out all the elements that's less than FP. So what we really have to check is that the min GT FP That the minimum of the greater than FB is actually L is actually a it's actually a, this the, the element is larger than or equal to SA. So we already checked min FA and we already checked max SB. And if this is a least element in FB is greater than equal to SA, that means that there is no element from FB to, you know, FB to FB to SA exclusive. Find the exclusive in the end. So we don't need this. We actually just need, uh, we actually only need this. Save one operation there. Quite nice, no? Okay, let's see. So five fifteen, it says it could be So five and nine. So that could be the f the f the field first. So the first one, five to fifteen, could be the first field, and so it could be class and it could be row. Second one could be class or row. The third one could be class and row and seat. Okay, that's a bit weird. So the first one. So the first run okay so let's see test input 2 this is 3 15 and 5 and okay so this first ticket here is invalid so because it's like one of these numbers uh, is not in any of the ranges what So 5 and 15, 1 and 14, and 5 and 9. What is wrong with this ticket here? So 3 is in, might be a row, right? 9 might be a class or a row or a seat. And 18 might be a class or a row or a seat. There's something wrong with the check here, right? 
I think that's clear. Uh, let's let's look at some of the turret, like the barge ranges. A uh, trace show ID. For this one, so what's the what's the merge ranges here? Let's see. So the merge ranges here are zero to one, and four to nineteen. Yeah, exactly. Now, um. Let's see, trace show ID. They're just ignoring the first ticket. Three nine eighteen, fifteen one five, five fourteen nine. Let's see here, trace show ID. Of a trace show ID. I'll just see like the how the filter is going. Let's see. Three nine eighteen false. Valid ticket. Oh, three is not in any of these ranges. Did I merge the ranges wrong? The zero to five or eight to 19. So the range for row should be zero to zero to one or four to 19. So this one gets merged so these are all sorted. Hmm, yeah, I'm merging the ranges wrong somehow. Let's see here. Trace show ID. Because three should be there, right? But it's not in the merge ranges for some reason. Weird. Okay, so here we're merging the ranges. Okay, merging 0 and 13. De -de -de -de. Okay, so we just kind of throw out the second one. Let's see, we have to fix merge ranges. Bring, 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 bring. Okay, so, okay, so if A contains AI or bx plus 1 is equal to a y then we merge the range that way now um then we just merge the range okay else if now okay we, i think we have to check the other one also we have, we have to check If um, if uh, A contains, so it's, we say if if A contains a Y. Oh, right. The problem here is that we need to take the max of uh, b max bx by i think le 
Yeah, so that's the thing, right? So then we merge these two. These two become, you know, 0 to 13. And then this one becomes 0 to 13. And then 0, yeah, so then we merge all of them. Because they're all invalid. Okay, so. The first one could be row. Second one could be class or row. Third one could be class or row or seat. So, I mean, what we do there... Wait, let me just check my notifications here. Oh, there's nothing important going on. Oh, do I, I also think I have to take the... No, yeah, we, we already checked that. Okay, I think this is fine. So three five fifteen and one nine fourteen and five nine eighteen. Blip 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 blip. blip. So the first one might be row, essentially. The second one might be class and row. Uh, let's see. Um, Let's have this be key. No, let's have this be string. And now could be field. So could be just gonna set turn us to strings. And we're gonna map key to this. Now we have to do some constraint solving. So first one could be row, second one could be class or row, third one could be class, row, or seat. Now if there's only one element, then we pick that one, we remove it from all the other lists, and then we check recursively. Okay, let's do that. Bing. Ding, 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 ding. This is actually going to be a, a set dot from list from distinct lists. It's going to be a set of strings. Uh, okay, it doesn't help that I know that it's distinct. Let's just say set from list. Oops, what did I do wrong? Yeah. This would be a set of strings. Okay, now I have... I only need this. List of uh, int set string. Let's delete these fields here. Okay, and now we have, you know, the first one could be US from list. Uh, let's just create a map from this stuff. map of int to a set of strings we're gonna import data.map and could be is going to be a uh, it's gonna be could be is gonna be map dot from list. Cause it's just like yeah, we have the we're doing the keys here. I 
think I would like to invert this list. Let's see. Let's see here. Um, invert map. If we have a map of, uh, you know, A set of B. Now, of course, we need or A and we need or to B. Map set of B to a map of B to a set of A's. Convert map. Okay, so let's take SOX. this constraint solver uh, I mean that's the hard part here right the constraint solver I think this invert map function is gonna be a bit too much let's just let's just not worry about it we just have a map of int to set of strings, okay? Actually, let's keep it as a list of these pairs. say okay a solution to so we're gonna say we don't need size range anymore we're gonna say solve takes a list of ints and a set of strings map int string to map int string now solve equals so we have here uh, possibilities now where sorted is going to be uh, sort by compare on size dot second of possibilities now it's here so I think a uh, compare on uh, what Ding 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 ding. It's gonna be set dot size. Sort by set dot size. This is gonna be you know the first the i. This is gonna be a pair of you know i, and then it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be. St set and then the rest 
So let's see case set dot size st of so let's see if set dot size st is one then uh we're gonna say so far then uh then the from singleton so let's how can we like look up the first element in a set like the only element in a set uh, do, 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 do. then we just say then a you know this is going to be actually as map of strings to int map of string to int then we are going to say we're going to insert then we're going to say um, set dot find min st so mst that's going to be set dot find min st okay then we're going to say map dot insert uh, st now we're going to say mst um, i so far and we're going to say solve possibilities prime we're going to insert it there else we don't know um, and where possibilities prime is map um, i comma st uh yeah s going to be i comma set dot delete um mst st of the possibilities else error set to set too big so uh, what i'm hoping is that the er the input is such that this will never happen probably gonna happen it doesn't happen for a test input uh now let's see so let's see flip solve map dot empty dollar for the test input uh oh sheet we ended up deleting all of them that's weird oh right So it's gonna be map maybe. Uh, we also have to remove the I from the list. Let's just do let's do the, the stupid way. Filter Oh wait. No, this is gonna be we're gonna just do the rest. Oh, and we we never have a we don't have a base case. Solve no possibilities so far equals so far. Figured everything out. Uh, 
set wrong size. Uh, let's show here and then let's show a i comma st rest uh, show like this just like when does this happen let's remove some trace that show id see trace show id we're not looking at these anymore How can this happen? What is what is so far at this point? So now we've decided that row is one. Oh right, this is supposed to be S. Okay, it works for our test input. This is gonna say it's gonna be F map. Why not data dot bifunctor dot second? Jeez, yeah, why not? It's actually gonna be uh, F map. Set dot delete MST. Uh, because pairs you map over the F map, the second part. Let's see. Let's see if it actually works on our input. I don't think it will, but. Uh, it would be nice. It just works. See, the input is constructed in such a way that um, that like there's not going to be. You don't have to do the proper constraint solver. It's nice. Okay, uh, so we want the places where it's. We want the places where it is. Um, so let's let's say here that solution is a solve map dot empty could be map of string to int, and this is going to be map map dot empty. because it always works like there's always going to be someone's ticket has a zero yeah but you're supposed to throw out every invalid every invalid ticket so it's just no valid ticket for that this is only for valid tickets to me right so you throw out that invalid ticket and then it's going to match onto some column. Right? So here we're also we're also lucky. We're lucky that, you know, we never have to kind of you know, we always have a field that's that only works for exactly one and the beginning and then there's only so it's like an ascending order of field numbers right so what could have happened is like that we can have you would have to like solve you know this field could be this and something and then the other field could be 
it's other thing and something yeah so we would have to write like a proper proper constraint solver but we don't actually have to do that now which is nice okay now what was the problem we have to find the ones that say departure Which ones are the departures? Uh, okay, let's see here. So we just, all oh right, let me just do solution two. Test input now. Uh, we're gonna say is departure. A string to bool is departure where a dep equals departure. Now it is departure if the take length of dep of uh, something. So if a you know equal departure no equal depth dot take length step so it's like this is these are the departures uh, then we say let sol equals solution for the input now then we say a uh, oh thanks for the follow gil christian appreciate it uh, let's see uh, then we say depths equals uh, filter uh, is departure dot first of a uh, map dot from to list of Saul. Now we're gonna print depths. Hi. Have you tried the uh, have you tried the uh, channel emote? Tritlo. Hmm. It's the best emote. Let's see, uh, now depths are these. A map second of the depths. So these are going to be the depths. Let's see, what are the departures here? All right. Noise. Okay, now we have the departures. So these are going to be the keys that we're going to look up in our ticket, right? Oh, shit. We're going to look up these keys in our ticket. Now, your ticket. Print a... Daps. Okay, so... Let... Okay, we're going to say... Let uh, look up in ticket lit. It's gonna be a input. It's gonna be your ticket of input. Bang. A something. Lit I is gonna be. Uh, lit I is gonna be look up in ticket. So we're gonna say map. Print map lit in depths. Not good. Unlit lit goes from int to int. And it's complaining about this. Um, oh, yeah, I think it's bang bang for lists. Nice. 
bang bang uh we look up our values the ticket index too large right it's gonna be i minus one because it's a uh, zero indexed for some reason ding, ding. and then we map some some yeah, that's gonna be our solution let's check check if it works Forty one milliseconds. That's like not so much longer than what do you get if you multiply those six values together? These are six values, right? Uh one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. That's not the and right answer, damn it. Okay, now we need to figure something out. multiply those six values together okay i i summed them makes sense always read the instructions right that's a trick to most things oh my god i have to wait 27 seconds all right y'all we have 27 seconds to kill what's your favorite programming language I can't stand the boredom. I am so incredibly bored for these 27 seconds. Jeez. Haskick. Best language, right? All right, let's uh, let's push it again. You ready? All right, we got it. Whoop, 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 whoop. It was nice. I like the fact that we did not actually have to write a constraint solver. That would have been a mess. And I also think, you know, admin of code is like, you shouldn't... <laughs> you shouldn't have to write an entire constraint solver to do it, right? Anyway. Uh, so, no, this was wrong. How did we do it? How, how we did it? Well, it's a lot of code. Bing, 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 bing. But I think the key key thing here is this could be a field function. That was pretty optimized. Because we like we split the set and then that set made it possible for us to kind of to kind of check if the middle range was there or not. That would have been a mess. Like in a list, you can't do that, right? You can't split the list into... Well, you could quick select it, right? Um, in O of N time. So we could have done quick select to do this even faster. Uh, but this is fine. This is 40 milliseconds, not too bad. Um, we wrote a lot of parsing code. Took us like a like like forty minutes just to write the parser. We could have like not parsed it properly and just kind of split it and stuff, and that would have been way easier. But you know, we did it. Um, then we have the input. We did the fields to excludes. We didn't. We don't actually need this function because we don't. We don't use it. Um. Uh, yeah, I think this is all just pretty pretty good stuff and i mean like you know the runtime is 40 milliseconds right and you notice that you know okay if i, I comment this out all of it and i just do print hello world like i literally don't do any work uh, it takes 27 milliseconds to not do any work. Just booting the RTS, doing all that jazz. Um, so, you know, the fact that we did all this processing in 13 milliseconds, you know, that's less than 16 milliseconds. So 
we can do this at well at, at 60 fps you know we could do this every frame and you know if you can do it every frame you i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spend time optimizing that right because it already is optimized in some sense Git status git add day 16.hs we're gonna add test input test input star we're gonna add input git status git commit am day 16 No, I uh, get diff head. It's always super slow. So I'm using Windows, and it's like I wish I was using VSL too. Anyway, let's push it. All right, uh, we did it. That's gonna be all for today. Um, I don't know. Like, was there any crazy optimization tricks we used here? Not really. Uh, like this thing here. Is just because the input is constructed in the way that in the way that we don't actually have to look so we don't actually have to consider if the if there is like a possibility if there's more than one possibility like we don't have to do anything we don't have to like pick and try and then backtrack or whatever we just do it this way which is nice uh, merge ranges that was cool that allowed us to do the range check super quickly because we just figured out the ranges um could probably do that faster if we like uh, put in the volume like put in the values in a set and then uh, split that set for each of the ranges something like that but you know it's it just worked fast so we don't need to transposing the valid tickets that was nice this could be feel like i said this is the key this set dot split call is the key to doing that fast this is going to be n log n and that's why we can just simply you know map it over all the fields for uh for like all of the all of the different values we can just map it and because it's log n and there's not that many uh i mean yeah it's just because yes yeah, log n and like there are like three thousand lines of of stuff here like 260 so each of these sets is going to contain 260 values um um, which, uh, and like, even less, is going to contain, like, 160, because, like, it's a, just the set, right? Uh, so, and, like, log, log of 160, that's nothing. Okay, so, this is fast. Uh, so, all of this is log n for each of the fields. So, it's log, look, uh, log n, where n is the set, says so the set per field. So, it's m times log n, but there's... There's like, so log 2 of 160 is going to be like 8. Uh, oof. Log 2, 160. Oh my god. Decimal form. Uh, what is this? I don't want to go to Wolfram Alpha. Evaluate. Yeah, it's like less than eight. And then uh, we have all these fields. That's 20 fields. 20 times. I mean, it's not a lot of operations per per check. So, which is nice. And a... Yeah. So it's all just very fast. I think it's quite good. Quite good. I like this one. I was afraid we would have to write a constraint solver. That would have been too much. That's why I just wanted to try if not doing that worked. And it did. So we're good. We're all good. Let's look here. Ooh. This map is starting to flesh out. 
I don't really know what it's doing. Like, is this like the locations? I guess we'll know in the end. Alright, but that's going to be all for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you want to see previous episodes, they're all on YouTube. Um, and, you know, I hope this helps you learn Haskell. I hope this, uh, you know, just kind of show how, how we program in Haskell. You know, it's like a regular programming problem, so that you can just you can do all of them, right? So Haskell has this uh, word on it that you know you always have to use a lot of category theory or whatever, but you don't. Like we're we're just using regular Haskell, like list operations and stuff, and like nothing. There's nothing happening here. That's uh, unless it's just set operations and stuff, right? And we just. The way we write it is like we do these data transformations, right? So this goes from this list of T fields into this, right? And then it's just going to be a map. So let it, like I just want to show you all, you know, how how do we, you know, what are we what are we thinking? What are we doing when we're programming Haskell? And like what are the mistakes people make? Because, you know, I make a lot of mistakes myself. And I've been doing it for quite long, like five years, something like that. So, you know, and it's a perfectly capable language doing anything you want. So don't, don't be afraid of Haskell. It is a good language. And like, you know, it compiles and we usually get it right. We don't often fail unless we're like, oh, we, we're going to use this unsafe thing because we think it will never fail. Like we, when we use this bang bang, you know, that was, it's not a safe operation, but uh, yeah. All right, thanks for tonight, and uh, see you all tomorrow. 5 o'clock UTC, that's 6 o'clock European time, or Central European time. That is noon in the US. And uh, yeah, again, happy Wednesday. All right, see you around.